Hello and welcome back. Happy Monday. So today is the final day worth of new material that we have for, for geometry. So it's a big day today. Uh, so we're going to look at similar solids. So the idea of similarity we've looked at before um, in, in previous units, but now we're going to apply similarity to uh, three-dimensional shapes, like in this case, uh, two similar solids. So it's going to help us answer questions like this. So you're, you're already seeing it on the board. It's kind of the hook question. But if I was, if my nephew was similar in every dimension to me, so if he was like a little mini me, just a shrunken down version of me, but same, same density, uh, you know, works out all the time. So he's, you know, super ripped and everything. Uh, <laughs> so if, if he was the same, uh, just a, a mini shrunk down version of me, and he was five feet tall and I'm six feet tall, then how much, how would our, our weights relate to each other? Uh, so we'll, we'll be able to answer that question. So if I weigh 160 pounds, we weigh a little more than that now, but just to make the math easier, if I weigh 160 pounds and how much should my nephew weigh if he was similar to me in, in every dimension? So it's not as simple as just setting up a proportion. So five goes to six, just as X goes to 160. Uh, and we'll, we'll learn why that is, uh, today. So that's the whole point of what we're doing today. All right, so first of all, let's look at similarity in one dimension. So this is what we, we already know. Um, pretty much everything we've done so far is with one dimensions. Uh, so in this case here, we have two rectangles that we're saying are similar to each other. So their sides are proportional. And of course, if this is six inches, the opposite side of the rectangle would also be six. So we can look at that. So the first thing we do to, to check to see if it's actually similar is we look at the corresponding side. So two goes to three, just as four goes to six. So whenever I set this up here, uh, I started with the image, which is the one on the right, and then went to the pre-image. So we're going from two to three. So when I set up the fraction for the scale factor, it's going to be three over two. So three goes to two, just as six goes to four. So in order for us to check to see if this is similar, we have to check the proportion. Now, normally you check the other two sides, but we know those are the same as these two. So uh, we can just check these two in this case. Um, but we cross multiply to see if they're indeed congruent to each other and see if they're the same proportion. And when we do that, we end up with 12 is equal to 12, right? So three times four is 12, two times six is also 12. So that tells us, yes, sure enough, the sides are proportional, which means that the two, uh, the two shapes are indeed similar to each other. So the next thing we do is we look at the scale factor. So if I'm going from the left image to the right image, so our pre-image to our image, what am I multiplying by? in order to go from two to three or from four to six. Now it's a pretty easy one. You can probably do it in your head. Um, it's, it's a decimal, but if you're not sure, you can always write uh, the, the ratio first and then go from the ratio to find out what the scale factor is. So our ratio, we would write this as two to three. So that's a ratio of two to three. And if you remember how we go from ratio to scale factors, we take the second one and divide it by the first one. So if we did two over three, two thirds, that would be a reduction, right? 0.6 repeating because it would be a scale factor less than one, but this isn't a reduction. It's getting bigger. So we need to flip it, right? And it's actually going to be three divided by two. So K, our scale factor K is equal to three over two, which is one and a half. So that would be our, our scale factor in this, uh, in this case. So now let's move up to similarity in two dimensions. So I've got in red over here, this is what we just talked about in one dimension. But now let's look at the ratio of their areas. Oh, by the way, I should probably go back and say, any one dimensional length that we have for these two similar objects is gonna have the same scale factor of one and a half. It's also gonna have the same similarity ratio as well. So um, this isn't a good example because I don't have a triangle, but if I was talking about the altitude or the height of the triangle, or the perimeter as well, those would also be one dimensional links and be one and a half times as big as the first one and or a ratio of two to three, depending on how you wanna say it. All right, now we're gonna move on to similarity in two dimensions. So we already said they were similar. Uh, we already found the scale factor and the ratio in one dimension, but now let's see what happens with the two dimensional, uh, in this case, the area. So four times two is gonna have an area of eight square inches and six times three is going to be 18 square inches. So we're going to have a scale factor of 18 over eight, which is going to reduce down. So, uh, another thing here, you're, you're going to notice, let me do the, the surface area ratio first. So the surface area ratio we said was going to be eight to 18, um, which is also going to reduce, uh, to four, four, four to nine. So I already kind of showed you what's going on here, but notice that our scale factor, if we do, uh, let me go ahead and, and put that in the calculator real quick so you can see what's going on. But 18 divided by 
uh, 8 is going to be 2.25, right? Okay, so that is our scale factor. That's how we go from 8 to 18. But notice what's going on. It was our k, our scale factor from the one dimension. But now since we're doing two dimensions, it's now going to be squared. So 1.5 squared is going to be 2.25. All right, then look at our surface area ratio. So the ratio of our of the one dimensions was two to three. But now they're dealing with surface area because it's in two dimensions, they're squared. So two squared and three squared, which would be four and nine. Now, if we wrote the ratio as, uh, so this had a surface area of eight and this one 18. So that would be eight divided by 18. If we put it in the calculator with the fraction, uh, numerator or denominator button, it'll reduce that for us, which will reduce the ratio to four to nine, which is what we get here. Okay, and we always want to write our ratios in reduced form, just like we would reduce a fraction, we'll also reduce the ratios. That'll make your math a little bit easier as you go along too as well. All right, so that's similarity in two dimensions, so you can probably guess we're going next. Similarity in three dimensions, so when we're talking about volume. So again, I showed our one dimensional scale factor of one and a half times each individual um, uh, dimension here, one dimensional measurement is going to be one and a half times as big when we move to the second one uh, with giving us a similarity ratio of two to three. So as we go from the first one to the second one, it's a ratio of two to three. All right, so the scale factor uh, for the volume is going to be th the third power. So 1.5 to the third power. And we can find that by putting in the calculator. So 1.5 carat three, which is going to be 3.375. So 1.5 to the third power, which is 3.375. Now, if I actually calculate the volumes, which I'll do that real quick. So the area of the base is 4 times 4, which is 16. So this will be 16 inches to the third power. Alrighty. And then over here, we have 3 times 3, which is 9. 9 times 6. So that's going to be 54. So that's going to be a ratio or a scale factor of 54 divided by... 16 which would be the exact same 3.375 which is pretty cool uh, and we actually were able to figure out what that would be just by scaling up uh, starting with our one dimensional scale factor all right so our volume ratio would be uh, basically the same similarity ratio just to the third power so it'd be two to the third power this should be uh let's talk about three pretend like you can't see that i uh, didn't do that one right but both of these would be to the third power so 2 to the 3rd power, like you didn't already know, is 8, and 3 to the 3rd power is 27. And those are already reduced because we are we started out when they were reduced as well. So they'll be reduced when we're done. All right, so in review, when we're talking about one-dimensional links like altitude, perimeter, height, base, width, anything like that, the ratio of the one-dimensional links is just called the similarity ratio. For our example, we did 2 to 3. And the one dimensional uh, knows that the ratio also is to the first power, right? Then we move on to the second power, two dimensions. Now we're talking about area, uh, in this case, surface area. They now are going to be squared. So two squared and three squared is going to be four and nine. And then the volume ratio, which is three dimensional units, would be two to the third power and three to the third power, which is eight and 27. All right, so let's do an example here. So here we have two spheres. Now all spheres are going to be similar to each other because they're exactly the same shape. They're just not going to be the same size, right? Um, so they are similar automatically. Same thing with all cubes. So all cubes are going to have to be similar to each other because they have the exact same shape. It's a cube, right? It's just going to be a different size. But not all rectangular prisms or pyramids, stuff like that. So you will have to check the dimensions by setting up an extended proportion. I'll go through some of that on the homework with you. So here they're telling us that the surface areas are 169 to 676. So that's going to be our surface area ratio. So that would be 169 to 676. Now, before we go from the surface area ratio to the ratio, we want to actually reduce it. So if we put this in the uh, calculator as a fraction, so 169, uh, actually, I think it already is reduced. 676, no, it's not. Uh, so that will reduce to 1 fourth, which is nice. Uh, so we could just rewrite the surface area ratio as one to four. So if I just asked right now, what's the scale factor for the two-dimensional or the surface area scale factor? It would be four times, right? So it's four times as big and for the surface area as it is for the original one. So what would the ratio be? Well, if we take our surface area ratio, 
Remember how we got that? We got it by squaring it. So we'll go back to the last slide. So if I started out by giving you this value here where both of these are squared, then how would I get back to the original ratio? Well, how do we undo a square? With the square root, of course, right? So all we have to do is take the square root of both of these values. Well, square root of one is still one. Uh, then the square root of uh, four is just going to be uh, two, right? So I actually did this from a different uh, approach. So I went ahead and just took the square root of these numbers here. So the square root of 169, this is what happens if you don't reduce first. Reducing obviously is the best, uh, and that's what you'll get for the answer anyway. But 169, the square root of that's 13, and 676, the square root of that's going to be 26. But then if you notice here, uh, 13 and 26 is just the ratio of 1 to 2, which is exactly what we got if we if we reduced first and then took the square root. So uh, always, if you can, put it in the calculator and see if it reduces first. And then once you have the most reduced uh, ratio, that will be your answer, of course, uh, just like reducing a fraction. Then you can take the square root of it and see where you go. All right, so now that we have the one-dimensional uh, this is kind of uh, one dimensional ratio or surface area, however you want to look at it. Uh, now it'll be really easy to go from the one dimensional to the three dimensional. So how do we do that? Well, if we go back here to our previous slide, so we start out in two dimensional, which was a square, right? So we square rooted it to get back to the one dimensional. Now, how do we go from one dimension to three dimensions? As we go from one to three, we need to cube it. So we know this original ratio is one to two. So when we cube that, that'll give us the ratio for the volumes. So when we squared it, one squared was one, two squared was four. And then when we cube it, so one cubed is still one. Okay, and then uh, two cubed is going to be two times two times two, which is eight. So again, this is showing the original one. If I didn't reduce it first, uh, it's the same answer, but that will actually reduce to the ratio of 1 to 8. So we want to work with the reduced numbers because they're a lot nicer. If you put that in the calculator, it's going to be pretty gross. You thought 676 was big. Well, multiply that by 26, and you're not going to like it anymore. So it's it's always easier to check to see if it reduces before you start cubing it or squaring it or whatever uh, instead of doing it afterwards. All right, so back to the original question that we started out with. So let's assume that my nephew and I are similar in all dimensions. He's just a, a shrunken down mini me, right? Uh, mainly referring to density uh, is the main assumption there. So uh, yeah, muscle density, get over it. Okay, so let's say I'm six feet tall and 160 pounds, which I'm not, I'm like way more than that, you know? Um, and let's say he's five feet tall. We just need to find out uh, what, what, how much would he weigh if he was actually truly uh, similar uh, to, to me? So in this case, we start out with the heights, right? Now the heights are in one dimension, right? So he's five foot tall, I'm six feet tall. Obviously this is not a scale. So that would be our ratio or uh, our similarity ratio is another way people uh, refer to that. So the scale factor would be six over five, which is 1.2. So I'm 1.2 times taller than he is. Uh, and therefore any other one dimensional length should be 1.2 times as big as well. So. Uh, for instance, like belt size or waist size, right? So my waist size would be 1.2 times the size of his waist as well, if we were truly similar to each other. All right, um, so surface area ratio. So to find the surface area ratio, we would just square it. So five squared and six squared, it's gonna be 25 and 36, uh, which cannot be reduced. So we're good to go because we already started out with a reduced one. So it's not going to reduce afterwards. And then what we really want to know is the volume ratio. So we go from one dimension to three. So five cubed is going to be 125. And six cubed is going to be 216, I think. Yeah, 216. So 125 and 216. So then the question we have is which one of these three ratios are we going to use to set up a proportion to solve for his weight? So our heights are obviously one, one dimension. What would be an example of a surface area ratio? So if we were looking at like the amount of material it took to make a, a t-shirt or something like that uh, for him or the amount of material like in square feet it would or square meters that it would take to make a t-shirt for me, that would be a surface area ratio. Uh, but, but what we're dealing with here is volume. Uh, assuming that we have the same density, then our volumes would also be um, be proportional. Now they're not going to be the proportion of the ratio of five to six because we're dealing volume that has length, width, and depth to it, three dimensions. So it's going to be five cubed to six cubed or a ratio of 
125 to 216. So when we set up our proportion, I'm going to start out with our ratio for our volume, which is 125 to 216. And then I'm going to set that equal to our weights. Now we know my weight, which I'm the bigger one of the two, right? So that's going to go on the bottom corresponding with the 216. So X is going to go on the top. That's going to be his weight. Uh, so the smaller one to the bigger one, the smaller one to the bigger one. So we want to find out how much he would weigh, which is going to correspond with a 125. So we solve that by cross multiplying. So I'm just going to get my calculator. So 125 times 160. And then we're going to divide that by 216, which would be about 92.6 pounds. So if he was truly similar to me in all dimensions and density, then we would expect him, if he's five feet tall, to weigh about 100, or sorry, about 92.6 pounds, which he actually weighs less than that. But that's because uh, I'm much more dense. I was going to use a word that's spelt with three C's, but I decided not to. That would be weird. I would never do something like that, right? All right, let's look at number one. So if you want to go ahead and get out your assignment, 16 minutes, it wasn't too bad. All right, so on number one, first thing we have to decide is are the two solids indeed or similar to each other. So the way we do that is by setting up an extended proportion. So I'm going to start out with the image on top. That way this is also going to be our scale factor. Because if we're going from our pre-image to our image, the image, the numbers for the image, the second one would be on top. So you could set it up backwards. It doesn't matter, but I'm do I like to do it this way. All right, so I'm going to correspond the parts by going from smallest to greatest and they also need to make sure they're in the same location so three is the smallest one okay then six is the next so that's medium length and then nine is the longest so smallest one again see those two correspond is two so that would be two and then four and then six so you can see all the corresponding parts smallest to smallest medium with medium large with large and make sure they're in the same location so that's like the the uh, height and then we have the depth four and six and then the width which is nine and six as well so what I need to do now is check to make sure these all reduce to the same scale factor or cross multiply but on these are easy enough you can see they're all the same fraction right so this is three halves this we could reduce a two out of it would be three halves as well this one also is three halves so they all have the same scale factor which is uh, a ratio of two to three so therefore they are going to be similar so our answer for similarity is yes what's our ratio well from the left to the right we're going from two to three so that's a ratio of two to three which is already reduced if i would have chose the four and the six or the six and the nine i'd have to reduce it but it would reduce down to two to three then to find the scale factor you take the second one over the first one which is three halves or 1.5 uh, if we notice here, all of these are going to be the same scale factor of 1.5, three halves, which is 1.5. And that's why I set up my extended proportions the way I did. All right, number four. So we want to check to make sure they're similar first. So again, I'm going to set up my extended proportion. So starting with the image, so smallest one's 15, then 39 and 42. Smallest one here is 10, which corresponds with the depth, and then 26 and 28, which is the height and the width, respectively. So those go together. Now all I have to do, I guess I'll move to the other side. Now all I have to do is check to make sure these all reduce the same fraction, uh, or you could cross multiply. But on this one, that's going to be three and two. Uh, you can take 13 out of both of these two, and 14 out of both of these two. So they, they do both. They all three reduce the same scale factor, which would be k is equal to 15 over 10, which is 1.5 again. It's the same two to three ratio, right? So are they similar? Yes. By checking our extended proportion, they all have the same scale factor. Our ratio is going to be 10 to 15, which is going to be two to three when we reduce. Uh, again, if you want to know how to reduce those you can always put them in the calculator if you're not sure like if i do 10 over 15 and to enter the calculator will reduce it for you if you're using the multi view um, you're probably using your phone so you might not have that function uh scale factor so that's going to be three over two which is going to be one half one and a half sorry all right number five so on this one we have two uh, objects now they're gonna we're gonna assume that they're similar so they're gonna tell us all the figures are similar so we don't have to prove it anymore because that's kind of tedious but now we just want to find the surface area and the volume ratio so the one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional so it's color coded so it matches the notes so on this one for a ratio we're going from the left to the right because that's how we read uh, unless you're reading arabic um where this i think there's some other languages that read right to left but yeah English reads left to right. So we're going to go from 20 to 5, which is uh, 25, which we can reduce that 
uh, as four to one, right? So four to one. All right, surface area, we're gonna do uh, our ratio. We're gonna use our reduced one because we, we don't have to square these big numbers. That would be nasty, but uh, so four squared and one squared, which would be 16 and one. So 16 to one. And then for volume, we'll, we're gonna cube them, right? So start with the reduced ones, so four cubed and one cubed, uh, which is gonna be, I guess I'll go ahead and put it in the calculator so you can see how we do the cubes. So 16 and then use the caret button, third power, which is gonna be 4,096, uh, I did something wrong. Oh, I did 16 cubed. Yeah, so it's four cubed, not that. I'm gonna say that was a big number. So four carat three, all right, 64. 64 and one, that's it. All right, so on number seven, notice on this one we have two spheres. They are similar, all spheres have to be similar. We already talked about that. Uh, what we want to know is what's the ratio of their volumes. That's what they're giving us. So 250 to 686. Now on this one, you notice they're both even numbers. So let's go ahead and reduce it before we take the square root or the cube root and then square it. So half of this, I can always cut it in half because it's even. It's going to be 125 and 343. Okay, now 125. Uh, that one I recognize, but we're actually done at this point. You could also put it in the calculator and it'll do that again for you. So we have 250 uh, divided by, try that again. So 250, let me use the fraction button, 686. Okay, yeah, so it'll reduce it for you. Now what I want to do is I'm going from volume. I can go straight to surface area, but that would be a little complicated because we're not, uh, we're going from the third dimension to the second. So you'd actually have to uh, take the two thirds power, I believe. Yeah, the two thirds power, which is a little complicated. So let's just go from the third dimension to the first, and then we'll go from the first to second. And we'll square it separately instead of doing the cube root and squaring all in the same, uh, all in the same step. So let's take the third root of 125. So 125 and then carrot, I'm gonna do one divided by three. Okay, and you might have to put that in parentheses. If you're not getting five, you probably need to put the, the exponent in parentheses. Your calculator also might have a cube root button. This one only has a square root button, but if it, or well, it has the X root button, but some of them I saw had a cube root button, which would be nice. All right, so that's gonna be five. And then the other number we have was 343. And we're gonna take that to the one third power as well, which gives us seven. So our ratio in one dimension is gonna be five to seven. Now that we have the one dimension, it's pretty easy to go to the second. All we have to do is square it. So five squared and seven squared, which will be 25 and 49. Now I told you we could have found, went straight from volume to surface area by doing uh, the cube root and squaring at the same step. So let me go ahead and show you that because it's kind of cool. So if I took 125 and then I'm gonna take it to the two thirds power. So the, the squaring, it's gonna take it to the second dimension, but we started out with the third power. So uh, the one third power will take it back to the start. So that'll actually get us 25, which is kind of nice. And I could do the same thing with 343 and take that to the two thirds power. Now this is a little advanced, but if you can follow, it's actually kind of cool. Uh, in case you're wondering, you could actually do this as a fraction as well, I believe. So 125 over 343, uh, let's see how it lets me put this in. And then just to the two thirds power, Boom, 25 over 49. Uh, you could have done the exact same thing and done the one third power as well. So, whoa. Alrighty, and that will give us the original ratio, which is five to seven in one dimension, which is kind of nice. So if you can put it in as a fraction and all that stuff, then go for it. All right, number nine. So on this one, we have a similar triangle. They tell us the uh, one of the dimensions is 16, the corresponding one's 28. So that's for the ratio because those are one dimensional lengths, just in inches. So we can reduce that uh, fraction or that ratio. It's gonna give us four to seven because we divide both of them by four. And then to get the service area ratio, we just square it. So four squared will be 16 and then 49. Okay, so they tell us the area of the smaller triangle, which is this one, is 54. So what is the area of the bigger one? Well, if we're talking about area, that's gonna be using the surface area ratio, not the similarity ratio. So we have to square it first, right? So it's gonna be 16 and 49. So I set up my proportion. So 49 goes to 16, the bigger one goes to the smaller one, 
just as the area of the big triangle, which is our x, goes to the area of the small one, which is the 54 that they told us. So smaller, uh, smaller one goes to the smaller one, bigger one goes to the bigger one. So they're, they're set up corresponding. So all we have to do is cross multiply. So we can put that in our calculator. So 54 times 49, and then we're going to divide that by 16, which gives us 165.4 approximately, or 338. Three uh, we'll match what's on the answer bank there. Okay, so we just found the area. So again, we started out with the one-dimensional ratio, and then we squared it to find the surface area ratio, and from there we set up a proportion to be able to solve for the missing one. So it's a very similar problem to what we did with um, the problem with my nephew and I, except that one was using the volume ratio, and this is using the surface area ratio. Okay, two more with, I'll do with you. So number 12 says two similar cones have heights of 4 and, and 12. So if we're talking about heights, that's one-dimensional, so that's their scale factor, uh, which is going to be, um, sorry, this should, did I fix that? Oh, yeah, I did. I just didn't update it here, but this should say ratio. So um, ratio. Okay, because otherwise it would be a decimal. We don't want to deal with that, so we'll just do it as a ratio. Uh, keep it all consistent. So what's the ratio? That's going to be 4 to 12, which reduces when we divide by 4 to 1 to 3. What's the ratio of the surface area? So we square it. That's two-dimensional, which would be 1 squared and 3 squared, which is 1 and 9. And then for the volumes, we cube it. So 1 cubed and 3 cubed, which is 1 and 27. So those are those ratios. 13, last one. Shipping box holds 450 golf balls. So ask yourself, if we know how many golf balls it holds, is that a one-dimensional, two-dimensional, or three-dimensional? Good question. So another shipping box has dimensional dimensions that are three times the size of the other box. How many golf balls does the larger box hold? So first, it tells us that the dimensions are three times as big, so the ratio in one dimension will be one to three, because it's three times as big. Then if we're talking about how many golf balls it holds, that's not a one-dimensional length. It's not a two-dimensional. It's actually a three-dimensional, like volume, right? So the more volume it has, the more space it takes up, and the more golf balls that it would hold. So on this one, the volume ratio would be found by, uh, by cubing. So one cubed and three cubed, which would be one and 27. So just this is the same ratio as you saw on number 12, by the way because we started out with 1 to 3 as our ratio uh, for the scale factor, or the similarity ratio, sorry. Uh, so now let's set up a proportion. The volume ratio is 27 and 1. So the first one's here. I guess I'm going to do 27 and 1. The larger box is the one we're trying to find out how many golf balls. So X will go on the top with the larger one, and on the bottom is the 450. So to solve for X, we just cross multiply, which will be as simple as multiplying 27 times 450. Technically dividing it by one, but you know, not the big of a deal. So 12,150 golf balls to be the largest answer that you have on the answer bank there. So that was it. Uh, right under 30 minutes. That's the last of the new stuff. So we have we have officially finished all of the test and material for geometry. Congratulations. Uh, that's quite an accomplishment. So now we'll take a practice test tomorrow. So it'll be Tuesday. I'm still waiting on uh, a few people to finish the practice test for a surface area. So I'll probably post that uh, sometime today. If not, then I'll post it on Tuesday. I know I'm like a whole week behind on that, but it's okay. And then we'll have three more days where we do extension activities. So um, definitely want to tune in for those. Um, my favorite one is Friday, so that will be Christopher Columbus versus uh, Rodrigo de Triana. It's kind of a historical one, and I think you'll you'll enjoy those extensions. So I'm going to stop talking, and I'll, I'll see you guys later.